Hi, welcome back to this special edition of Money, Money, Money. As India celebrates 75 years of independence, we at CNBC TV 18 are celebrating and promoting the idea of financial independence through a variety of shows. And today we want to talk about effective personal budgeting. Now, I know that all of us have grown up in homes and we have learned from our parents on how to budget uh, correctly for various household expenses and, of course, uh, you know, over and above that as well, along with managing our investments. But, you know, there is a big difference in the way our parents did it and how we are doing it. Because, you know, say even uh, a little over 10 years ago, there, you know, of course, incomes were uh, limited to some extent, but there weren't that many avenues of expenditure. But now, especially in the last five years, um, you know, there have been, uh, as our exposure to everything global is increasing, and there are so many more avenues of expenditure, along with the penetration of credit cards, and also so many of these buy now, pay later schemes, coupled with the rise in our levels of aspirations. What is happening is that the personal budget, uh, which is our household budgets, are going a little bit haywire. Debt, uh, personal debt levels are rising. So how do you actually combat all of this? How can you have an effective personal budget, which on the one hand can provide for all your requirements and on the other hand doesn't greatly curtail uh, your aspirations as well. So Harish Rao, who's an investment coach at Simple Equation, joins in to talk about just this. Harish, thanks very much uh, for joining in to talk about this topic, which at least I feel is very, very important uh, for especially the younger people today. So, you know, one thing is, like I said, we've all grown up, uh, you know, watching our parents budget for different household needs, you know, setting money aside for investing as well. But now that we are seeing so many more avenues of expenditure, right? I mean, credit card penetration is through the roof. Uh, everyone is offering these buy now, pay later schemes. Uh, you know, the Indian middle class has, uh, you know, very, very high aspirations now. So a lot of people are finding it tough to live within their means without, uh, you know, taking on debt. So what does personal budgeting really mean? in today's context? I mean, is it an outdated concept or does it, is it more relevant than ever today? Hi, Sumera, and good evening. And uh, I think it's a great topic for the uh, 75th year of independence. I'm glad you're doing these shows. Uh, going by what you just uh, described, uh, Sumera, there are a lot of uh, conflicting uh, things emerging from it. Uh, very high incomes and uh, very high aspirations colliding with uh, very low savings and uh, yeah, high borrowings. Uh, going back to what you said, I think our parents are our best role models for life values, especially on things concerning consumption, budgeting and uh, prioritization. If someone has parents who are uh, extremely emotionally balanced and disciplined, they are indeed very, very fortunate. See, unlike, say, the natural world where, you know, an animal looks at its parents and for sake of survival quickly adapts to whatever the parent is doing, it's a slow burn for uh, the humans, okay? We observe our parents over many years through many situations and then learn life lessons. So parents, have, you know, have to be extremely conscious on what life lessons they are actually giving to their children, okay? They are actually the number one role models. And you were talking about, uh, say, credit cards and, you know, the need for borrowing more. I think credit cards are really meant, are not meant for those who need credit, okay? Credit cards are really meant for people who want the rewards and the benefits that come from these credit cards. So most smart consumers I know use credit cards for, you know, extra benefits like the rewards, like uh, lounge access, like, you know, the offers that the credit cards uh, give them. And uh, please don't ever, you know, take the actual credit and, you know, roll over the credit from a credit card. It's just too expensive. Uh, there is simply no investment in India that can match the rate of return that a credit card actually charges you. That's true, actually. This revolving credit uh, is a very, very dangerous uh, concept. And the sooner people learn... Uh, you know, how it actually works, uh, the easier it'll be for them. But, uh, you know, Harish, uh, I mean, budgeting normally in, at least in, the, you know, our household has been pretty ad hoc. You know, this is what we need. This is how it works. Uh, you know, let's just divide it. And, you know, 
uh, maybe on a monthly, bi-monthly basis, it sort of changes, right? But, you know, like uh, when we, how we do investments, right? There's a philosophy attached to it. So like investing, does budgeting also need a philosophy? Yeah, if you can, if you have a philosophy to budgeting, I mean, if it is there as part of your uh, uh, work ethic, your lifestyle, then you really are blessed. Okay, in an emerging India in which, you know, salaries are extremely attractive, if someone can combine this, you know, high salary and high net worth with uh, extremely good budgeting and some good emotional qualities like delayed gratification, then they are absolutely on the path to extremely good financial freedom. High salaries, high savings, uh, good investment policy and tight budgeting, I think will result in a uh, very, you know, very high sound chance of uh, financial freedom at a very early age. Uh, those who embark on this, you know, at the beginning of their career will really appreciate it, say, when they are 35, 40, 45 years old. And they find that, you know, their ability to delay gratification, to, you know, uh, curtail consumption, to live by, you know, a certain set of guidelines and rules will really help them a lot. So the philosophy is really, uh, you know, you actually spend much, much less than what you earn. You have a sound investment uh, philosophy. If you go through a financial planner, the financial planner will expect, you know, you to adhere to a, a financial planning statement. He will allow, he will expect you to have a certain goals on savings, certain goals on investments, and uh, on a either a, a yearly review or a half yearly review. Any shortfall or any deviation from such uh, plans will be highlighted. So. Uh, if you if you think that you don't have a budgeting philosophy, please do implement a financial plan. When you go through a financial planner or an investment advisor, uh, the process itself will you know sort of demand that you have a budgeting philosophy. Okay, that's true. Actually, in fact, uh, you know, this uh, teaching uh, our children the concept of delayed gratification, I think, is one of the greatest gifts that we can give them. Uh, but let's get to the practical aspects, Harish. Uh, what are the constituents, uh, or rather, what should be the constituents of a personal household budget? And, you know, how would a person get started? Yeah, I think uh, if you divide it into four or five buckets, so one would be uh, the essentials like uh, food and groceries. The other would be rent. Rent would possibly be one of the biggest constituents of a budget if you're in a rented house in a metro city. And then you would have children's education, and then you would have utilities and uh, uh, stuff like that. Then you would have probably personal transportation and uh, stuff like that. And lastly, all the discretionary items. So discretionary would be your entertainment, your uh, holidaying, your... Uh, uh, restaurants and your clothes etc would be discretionary so obviously the discretionary part is the least important of the uh, budget uh, of the household budget but the first part is is a priority i mean the other four or five things which i had highlighted is a priority you can't skimp on you know food on children's education on on the rent on utilities etc so the discretionary part is where you possibly, you know, uh, do the uh, final management to, you know, manage your budget. Yeah, I know, uh, you know, uh, in theory, discretionary comes last, but I think it occupies the most mind space for all of us. And which is why it becomes uh, essential, like you said, you know, to create uh, that priority list. So how do you, uh, you know, budget for this priority list and what is... Ideally, I mean, how much bu buffer should be there besides, uh, you know, the money which has gone into all of these pockets? <laughs> so, Mera, more the buffer, the better, okay? Uh, we have seen in the last two years how we are living in an extremely uh, volatile and uncertain world. More the buffer, the better. Uh, in terms of, if you want me to give a number on uh, savings, it should be a minimum of 20%. Though many of my friends in their discussions, many of the uh, investment advisors I meet say that, you know, Indians can save as much as, say, 50% in a double-income, high-earning household. There could be 50%, 60% uh, savings also. It may sound uh, observed, but I know of uh, champions who have actually uh, done this. Coming back to your issue of uh, consumption vis-a-vis -vis savings, I mean, you just have to go through media. There are more advertisements for consumption than advertisements for savings or investments, okay? 
and uh, coupled with social media and the instagram generation it is actually quite tough for a millennial millennial to be you know uh, quite ascetic uh, in his uh, thinking or in her thinking that you know she could uh, delay gratification uh, forever and then you know adopt a very very moderate lifestyle when most of her peers or who many of the people in her uh, peer group are you know uh, spending well and you know living well and you know having this uh, yolo philosophy so if you're going to have the yolo philosophy then um, my best wishes <laughs> well said arish okay we're going to take a very quick break uh, but uh, we're going to continue this chat on effective personal budgeting more tips and hacks lined up next stay tuned I welcome back you're watching money 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 with us is Harish Rao who's an investment coach at Simple Equation and today we're talking about effective personal budgeting so we've spoken a bit about you know what constitutes a personal budget and how do you uh, sort of get started but uh, you know Harish uh, how do you account for something like uh, you know a variable income or variable expenses because you know a lot more people now are in freelance work today you know so they may uh, of course find it tough to get loans because they don't have that consistent salary statements etc as well uh, you know they can have sudden expenses so how can their budget reflect these sort of realities this is such a terrific question samara this is such a good question see there is a golden rule in this if your human capital is uncertain then your financial capital or investment capital better be certain if your finan if your human capital is very certain then your financial capital can be uncertain or you can take more risk so for example if you are a tenured professor in a government college okay that means your human capital or your visibility of earnings is very very certain okay so definitely then you can take more risk with your financial capital but if your human capital is uncertain or, or has got a very very short shelf life then you got to make your financial capital all that more solid or all that more predictable okay that that having uh, been said there are there are many people in you know who are self employed or in the gig economy who are earning very very well so for such uh, people with you know with great one off pay days or with windfall sort of uh, earnings they can take some risk provided they have you know made their uh, what do you say their budgets very very certain or their goal planning very very certain okay in case you think that your uh, you, your earnings are too uh, too what do you say volatile or too unpredictable then you better start having a contingency fund which is very very important okay in fact most planners insist that the contingency fund is the number one step to financial planning okay the contingency fund could be uh, something like 12 months of living expenses that's very very important just having a contingency fund would enable you to you know take those slightly you know bigger risks in life that you know give you that freedom or give you that you know the joy in living you just knowing that you have a contingency fund to cover for any expense so that that is very very important so again i would hugely recommend that people who are on a variable income or who, are, who have extremely volatile uh, income uh, uh, fluctuations they meet a financial planner they need to have a fix on their uh, goal value they need to really know the importance of uh, cash flows etc and then they can take it forward the mm. harish uh, you know it's not enough just to have a budget right i mean it's a moving target so how and when uh, should a budget be reviewed yeah i i think a budget should be reviewed whenever there is a change in life circumstances like for example if one of the spouse uh, changes uh, his or her job or you know starts a new business that's you know one example or if there is a new addition to the family that's another example or you might have got a windfall you might have got you know inherited a lot of money from one of your parents now so in all these cases you or your liabilities uh, cease to exist that means you have paid the final emi on your house so in each of these cases you can definitely you know review and you know recalibrate your uh, budget there was one very very good piece of advice that uh, someone gave me regarding uh, budgeting a really good way of keeping a budget is to have two separate bank accounts you know one one bank account is for your consumption 
uh, and your expenses, and the other bank account is for your investments, okay? Under no circumstances can your investment bank accounts ever be used for consumption or expenses. So this by itself, you know, ring fences, uh, you know, uh, both the accounts, the investment account as well as the consumption or expense account. So that part of the philosophy is should be non-negotiable, uh, Samira. That's, that's, I think, is a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's a question that even I've been asking that uh, some very, very important goals likewise should have their own portfolio so that that temptation to sort of dip in is just, you know, uh, magically <laughs> removed, so to say. But uh, Harish, you know, you shared an absolutely fantastic piece of advice. So let me lean in on your experience a little bit more. Any other practical budgeting tips that you can talk about? Uh I read this book called uh, Your Money or Your Life by a couple called uh, uh, Vicky Robin and Joe Dominguez. Now, this was a book that reached the New York Times bestseller list. And this book became extremely popular after the 2008 global financial crisis. This book has got, you know, a very uh, alluring chapter called 100 Ways to Save Money. And uh, any guess on what's the number one way to save money? The authors say the number one method to save money is stop trying to impress others, okay? The moment we stop trying to impress others, you, we, we will get, you know, a separate wind in our wings, you know, to embrace budgeting, to, you know, look at frugality as something that's very, very essential and, you know, which will contribute to our long-term fulfillment and freedom. So I think that's a good good thing to, you know, take out uh, at the end of this program, Sumera. Let's stop trying to impress others. We uh, Our money is for our consumption and our, you know, life goals and our uh, life values. The moment we try to impress others, then, you know, we don't set the agenda and other people's reaction to our, uh, you know, uh, purchases move the needle, which should not be the case. No, absolutely. And, you know, I'm all for normalizing living within our means. And I really wish uh, that more people would, uh, you know, listen to this advice. And by the way, you know, related to this, I read a very, very interesting piece on stealth wealth. Uh, so, you know, this is a rising yeah. concept in the U.S. where the rich don't want to flaunt their wealth. Of course, there's an IRS angle to it and, you know, they don't want to get into the IRS. But I thought it was fantastic. I mean, stealth wealth, it's for a safety net for you and really, like you said, uh, not a tool to impress others. But uh, any specific apps or, some, uh, you know, a software that you would recommend for budgeting or, you know, would a simple uh, Excel spreadsheet do? Uh, I, if you need an app to do budgeting, you are already in trouble. Uh, it's your, you know, diagnostic that, you know, you are in trouble if you need an app for uh, budgeting. Budgeting should be in your DNA. It should be in your, uh, what do you say, life ethic. But uh, jokes apart, I think a simple Excel sheet will do. I have actually seen many of my friends show me their Excel sheets. Uh, and I've been very impressed with the way they have, you know, saved money for their retirement. And, uh, and they are very, very wealthy because of their uh, personal budget. Okay, so I and all of them use an Excel sheet and their own planners. So which which I think shows that if you can combine very simple uh, tools like an Excel sheet with strong commitment to saving and long term investment, you're on the ticket to good uh, financial freedom. Yeah, absolutely, Arish, you said it well. Uh, all that's required is a commitment on our part to really do the right thing. Thanks very much, Arish, for joining in. So, you know, there you heard it uh, right. all about effective personal budgeting and why you need it. I mean, it seems that with time, uh, a lot of us are ignoring uh, you know, the uh, math on our personal budget, but it's really something uh, that you can, uh, you know, occupy a few weekends with. And trust me, in the long run, it will really, really help you. Thank you very much for watching the special edition of Money, Money, Money. We'll see you again next week.